On June 12, 1968, just months after the assassination of her husband, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Coretta Scott King spoke at class day at Harvard University. These are words from her speech. In a power drunk world where means becomes ends and violence becomes a favorite pastime, we are swiftly moving towards self-annihilation. Your generation must speak out with righteous indignation against the forces which are seeking to destroy us. In this period of social, political, economic, and religious transformation, not one of us can be spared the luxury of withdrawing from the arena of action. As members of the family of mankind, we have an inherent moral responsibility to become participants in the greatest creative venture in the history of our world, that of remaking, reshaping, yes, restructuring our whole world order. Each one of us is being called to help save our society and the world from destruction. There is reason to hope and to struggle if young people continue to hold high the banner of freedom. They have made mistakes and will make more, but the older generation has failed America dismally. And if it is discredited, it has earned its disrepute. It is time for both fresh ideas and new leadership to come forth because without it, our society is on sinking sand. The world is in dire need of a spiritual awakening, which will make those eternal values of love, justice, mercy, and peace meaningful in our time. Still I rise by Maya Angelou. You may write me down in history with your bitter twisted lines. You may try me in the very dirt, but still like dust, I arise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Because I walk like I got oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like moons and like suns, with the certainty of tides, just like hopes springing high, still I'll rise. Do you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries? Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't you take it awful hard, cause I laugh like I've got gold mines dig digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words, you may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness, but still like air, I'll rise. Does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise that I dance like I've got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs? Out of the huts, of history shame, I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I'm a black ocean weeping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak that's wondrous clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestry gave, I am the green. I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. These excerpts and quotes are read from Dr. Eddie Gloud's book, Begin Again, James Baldwin's America and its Urgent Lessons for Our Own, released in 2020. Beginning with a quote by James Baldwin. To do your first works over means to re-examine everything. Go back to where you started, or as far back as you can. Examine all of it. Travel your road again and tell the truth about it. Sing or shout or testify or keep it to yourself, but know whence you came. In reflecting on Baldwin's words, Dr. Eddie Gloud writes, we have to go back to our first works. Doing so will involve much of what Baldwin called for and will entail an honest reckoning. What is happening today isn't unprecedented 
it's just uniquely our times. We have to understand our own anger and disappointments and figure out for ourselves how to pick up the pieces, to hold off the temptations of hate and despair, and to fight the battle once again. Beginning again or doing one's first works over involves concrete efforts and stories to bring into reality a new America. We have previously reached in our history two critical moments of moral reckoning, where we face the daunting challenge of, be of beginning again. Both times we failed. The first was during the Civil War and Reconstruction, and the second was the Black freedom struggle of the mid 20th century. These moments are connected insofar as the Black freedom struggle, what scholars call the Second Reconstruction, sought, among other things, to complete what was left of what the historian Eric Foner describes as the unfinished revolution. Now we find ourselves facing a moral reckoning of the same magnitude. We should have learned our lesson by now that changing laws or putting our faith in politicians to do the right thing are not enough. We have to rid ourselves once and for all of this belief that white people matter more than others, or we are doomed to repeat the cycles of our ugly history over and over again. George Santayana, the Spanish-born American philosopher, was right to point out that those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. But what he didn't say is those who willfully refuse to remember become moral monsters. From Dr. Eddie Glaude's book, Begin Again, James Baldwin's America and its Urgent Lessons for Our Own. In the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. Injustice everywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. The time is always right to do what is right. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. This is the interrelated structure of reality. On behalf of all of our participants in the greater Cooperstown community, thank you for joining with us today in this virtual celebration of Dr. King's life and legacy. We hope you will be inspired to take action, to work for nonviolence, to work for equality for all, and that you will do this without delay. Thank you again.